Okay, everybody. So on today's video, I have Steve, who is living in Medellin for just about two years now. And uh, he is going to share with us his experience there. Stick around. Hey, Steve, thank you so much for coming on my channel and reaching out to me. I really appreciate that. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's uh, eight o'clock in the morning here, so I got my coffee early, and I'm I'm ready to go for another wonderful day here in Medellin. How's the coffee in Colombia? Pretty good. Fantastic. <laughs> it's very good. I love it. Yeah. So, Steve, give us a, a little background info. I I know before we get started, mo a lot of my viewers are from or want to go to the Philippines in other countries, but you had visited the Philippines. Um, so I'll, I'll just put that out there, but, um, yeah. where are you from Steve and how old are you? I, uh, I'm originally from the Columbus, Ohio area and uh, I, I was raised and grew up there. I moved to Dallas, Texas, spent most of my adult life in Dallas, Texas. I'm a retired school teacher. So I have a pension. I've been coming to, Oh, uh, my age. I am, I'm turning 60 this year. So I'm still 59. Okay. Uh, I've been coming to Medellin since 2014. And I moved okay. here a few years ago. So uh, I did a lot of due diligence before I moved so I could uh, get an idea of if I liked it or not. So that's a little bit background on me. Okay. So um, I guess the first question is uh, why Colombia and why Medellin in particular? Uh, well, I'll tell you the reasons why I moved here. Uh, one of them was cost of living, which I'll tell you about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a mountain man, so I love the mountains. If you enjoy okay. the mountains and the scenery and all that, great place. There, now, it's not near the ocean, so if, if you want the ocean, it ain't going to work. Um, let's see. The weather is amazing. Highs are generally high 70s, maybe low 80s every day of the year. It gets down to about 60 at night, so it's perfect for sleeping. There's no need for air conditioning or heating here. Um, let me think what else. Uh, the people here... Uh, and, and even in Philippines, I think you'll agree with me. The people are wonderful there. Well, they're yes. wonderful here too. So very helpful, pleasant, happy. Uh, of course, uh, women, it, they're beautiful here. So that's nice. Yeah. It's close to the U.S. I'm on the same time zone as Dallas. So I can take a flight from Medellin to Florida in three and a half hours. And then it's another three-hour flight to Dallas. So I can be home in half a day if I want to. Uh, the infrastructure here is very good. It feels first world. Mm -hmm. uh, in certain areas, it, it feels as, as nice as any city in, in the U.S. So some of the top areas are fantastic here. So those are the main reasons. Now, when you were looking at Colombia, did any other countries uh, pop up on your list as possible places to, to move to and retire? I was open to uh, oh, uh, my focus was Latin America. Okay. Uh, I, I took out a map and I thought to myself, where do I want to live? Uh, I ruled out anywhere that was within 20 degrees outside of the equator. I wanted to live okay. near the equator. Uh, I wanted to live near where, uh, where the U.S. is. So I ruled out, no offense to the Philippines, mm -hmm. but I ruled sure. out Asia and all that. It's just too far for me. So that limited me to about three or four countries. So uh, Venezuela ruled it out, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Ecuador um, was, it's, I think it's a little bit cheaper than here, but uh, it didn't appeal to me. Uh, I thought about Peru, and then I thought about uh, Panama, and I thought about uh, Costa Rica. Those turned out to be a lot more expensive than I was expecting. Uh, yeah. Colombia was cheaper. And I had a friend who lived here, so I came down and checked it out, and I was sold. As soon as my plane landed at the airport, and we taxied to the airport, and I looked around, I thought, wow. And the first day, once I got here, I already knew this is where I wanted to be. So I was sold on it pretty quick. So that, that's the, the short version of why I chose here. But uh, Before we talk about your trip to the Philippines, what were some of the things that sold you on Colombia? You said you were sold on it right when you landed. So uh, the scenery, uh, the people, the cost of living, um, uh, just the feel, the vibe was fantastic. I felt immediately connected to it. 
it, it was just a, one of those things that I, you probably felt that way about some of the places that you've seen. You just knew. Yeah. So I can't give you a specific reason, but I already knew this place is for me. So uh, I, I stopped. I, I just focused completely on Medellin. I have not okay. been to other parts of Colombia. Uh, as soon as the quarantine will allow me, I'm going to be traveling throughout Colombia. And then I'm planning on traveling throughout South America. And I may uh, use this as my base and sure. then try living in different parts for different time periods. I'm free as a bird. I'm retired. So I, I can do whatever I want. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, I do want to get back to the fifth places. So that's that's the short end. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll, we'll jump back to Columbia in just a second. But um, tell me, you you said you did go to the Philippines one time. And uh, yeah. where did you go? And what were your impressions of the Philippines? Uh, I uh, The same friend that I visited in Medellin moved to mm -hmm. Baguio City. You did? So, okay. Yeah, I flew into Manila and took a bus. It was like an eight-hour bus ride up to Baguio. Mm -hmm. I liked Baguio, the city. Uh, I was not real impressed with the Philippines. It felt very third world. Uh, mm -hmm. It just wasn't comfortable for me. Um, okay. I, I it, it just felt like everybody had his hand out wanting something sure. from me. Uh, the, uh, now I will say, uh, I was taken aback by the attention from the women. Uh, sure. it, it, it was overwhelming. Uh, I know you've talked about that a lot, but, uh, wow. Yeah. I did feel overwhelmed there. So my general impression is it was nice to visit, but it, it wasn't for me. I, I wasn't comfortable there. It just felt too third world for my taste. So two quick questions on that. So you almost two years in Columbia. And uh, some time in the Philippines, what were your impression, impressions on the women? Who do you think, in your opinion, is more beautiful as far as uh, women go? Well, my, my preference is Latin women. So uh, I consider Latin women as beautiful as there is. Mm -hmm. It depends on your preference. If, if you like uh, the, the Asian, the Filipina, they're very pretty over there, too. But sure. my preference is the, the Latin women. So I consider them the more beautiful. Okay. Well, let's, let's jump back over to Colombia and some questions. So um, we talked about why you chose Colombia and Medellin. And uh, so Spanish language, how important is it to live in Colombia to know Spanish? I, 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 well, it's a, it's a, it's a Spanish speaking country. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to know Spanish. Now, if you're going to live here, if you want to visit, that's different. But sure. if you're going to live here permanently, you should be able to speak Spanish well enough so that you can have a conversation and understand what the people are trying to tell you. If you can do that, you'll be fine. If you're limited, if you're struggling to put a sentence together, if you have no vocabulary, you will need help. You're going to need to know somebody. I don't think it's going to be for you if, if you're that limited. So uh, you do need help if you cannot speak conversational Spanish. So in my opinion, it's mandatory. Now, um, if you know a little Spanish, maybe uh, moving there and immersion might help move things along too, though. Didn't you learn that way, immersion? No. no uh, uh, yes, originally, but before I came here, I, I had a, a very good grasp of Spanish before I arrived because I've been here. You can, okay, so... Uh, you need to have a, a grasp of some conversational Spanish at, at the minimum. Is that correct? Yeah, I would agree. Uh, a, a basic conversation. Uh, you should be able to ask for things. You should be able to understand what they're trying to tell you. Uh, you should be able to describe things. Your vocabulary should be good enough where you can at least get your message across. That is what I consider a little bit of Spanish. So, Okay. Uh, if you cannot put a sentence together, if you have very limited vocabulary, uh, using your phone, what if you don't have a connection? You're right. you're going to have a hard time. Yeah. So you need to have a, 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 a good conversational grasp and you'll be fine unless you know somebody. If you know somebody and you have help, mm -hmm. then you'll be fine. But if you're living here by yourself, mm -hmm. you have no help, you don't know anybody you're going to need to be able to speak uh, conversational Spanish. 
or you will be frustrated. Okay. So um, a lot of people are always interested in relationships, let's be honest. And um, yeah. so, in, you know, in the Philippines, you can have a large age gap. But in Colombia, we were discussing before uh, the recording here that uh, age gap is not as common. So at uh, you're 59, at what, what is a realistic age of women that you can date in Colombia? Probably mid thirties and up. Mid thirties and up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, which is still, I mean, that's still 20 years, right? You know, I mean, yeah, well, I'm 59. Uh, if I dated a woman who was 35, mm -hmm. that's well over 20 years. That's a pretty big gap. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and, and how are the Columbia women? They maintain their beauty pretty, pretty well. Uh, yeah, they, they're feminine. They're very feminine. Uh, they uh, keep themselves in shape. People walk here a lot. So uh, I would say if you're giving me, if I'm giving you the average woman, <laughs> she's about five, two, five, two and a half. Uh, she's probably 110 pounds. So okay. they're, they keep themselves in very good shape. The okay. competition here is pretty strong. So uh, nice. they, they have long hair. Uh, mm -hmm. that just carry themselves uh, very well. So it, it's, it, you'll notice them. <laughs> and, and how hard is it to date there? Is it pretty easy? It, age appropriate, 35 and up, very easy. Very, very easy. easy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can approach women here without any trouble and they will, uh, they will accept my advances. They'll, they'll talk to me, that sort of thing. The younger women, uh, no, not really. Okay. So what are some of the pros of dating a Colombian woman? Like what, what are some of the uh, things that are you're attracted to with Colombian women? Oh, uh, I, well, I like them. Uh, I like the height. Uh, I like the dark hair. Uh, I like their femininity. I like the way they dress. Uh, they're, they're very easy to be with. Uh, they remind me of women back in the fifties and sixties, more of that. They're very easy to get mm -hmm. along with and they're very pleasing. So mm -hmm. I enjoy them. What about their value system? Are they still very, uh, like they're still very, almost like a, a woman who was in, in the 1950s, you know, yeah. like she takes care of the home. Is, is that yeah. still pretty normal? Yes. If, if you're in a relationship, you know, a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, she will do all the cooking, cleaning, maintaining the house. For example, uh, I know a, a lady, I moved into an apartment and mm -hmm. she told me, she said, I'll come over and cook and clean for you every day. I'm not even living with her. Wow. Yeah. So if you treat them well, mm -hmm. they will treat you very well. And they're very appreciative. And how about on, on the opposite spectrum? I, I know there must be some negatives, right? Is, are, are they <laughs> being Latin women? They Do they have, you know, we all hear about the... Uh, Jealousy and uh, temper. temper yeah. and uh, it's a non-confrontational culture here, it so is. they're not going to yell and scream at you like uh, what you're going to experience in the Western English-speaking world. Mm -hmm. uh, they they will uh, passive aggressive. You'll get mm -hmm. that. They'll they'll do the silent treatment on you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you'll get some of that. Not to the level that you get in the field, the tampo. Yeah, they don't they don't do that here. Uh, okay. but, uh, when they're mad, you'll know it, uh, but yeah. they get, yeah, it's, it's, they'll go up very high and then they drop down real quick. So they'll, they'll, uh, they'll blow their stack mm -hmm. within a few minutes done. And it's like, it never happened. So, um, it, it's, that's about it. I, I, I really just have nothing negative to say about them. All my experiences have been very good. Okay. Now you had mentioned to me, if you're a man 50 plus, you should be, mm -hmm financially secure, um, yeah. keep, keep yourself in reasonable yeah. physical height, condition. Height and weight appropriate. If, mm -hmm. if you're a hundred pounds overweight, they're, they're not going to be interested in you. you. You need to keep yourself reasonable. Right. You better be, depending on the level of her activity, you better be active. If your idea of sitting around watching TV is a good day, they're not going to be interested. This The weather here is great, so they're going to sure. be up out and about and all that so uh you better keep up with her so okay. yes all right 
So uh, let's talk about uh, cost of living real quick. Uh, realistically, well, like for example, we're, what is your monthly budget usually, or maybe not budget, but what is your monthly expenses? I spend about $1,200 a month, but uh, I eat out seven days a week. I eat dinner seven days a week. Uh, so it depends on, on what your priorities are and where you choose to live. Okay. I'm living in an area that's not expat friendly. So the, the cost is going to be cheaper here. For me, priorities are entertainment and eating out. So I'm willing to spend more money on those. So I average about $1,200 a month. Okay. And when you say ex, uh, it's not it's not expat friendly, I think you mean that there's not a lot of expats that live there. It's mainly locals, right? Yes. Yeah, I live uh, completely with locals. I, I, I haven't met an American here. I've never heard English spoken here. It's all Spanish. And the people are friendly. and Oh, yeah. Yeah, smile. I, they, they, yeah. I'm sort of a, a, a hero here, a rock star, because mm -hmm. I'm so unusual. It's like, oh, my God, a, a, a foreign. <laughs> they just, they're not used to seeing them here. Sure. And... Um... What about the food? Are you are you a fan of the food there? I, some people have told me yeah. it's a little bit bland, but it's still good. Yeah, it's very bland, very basic, but there are lots of options here. Sure. Seafood, uh, the Argentinian steakhouses, uh, those are great. Mm. Uh, Peruvian food is very popular here. Um, okay. You've got about everything you can think of. Uh, in Poblado, I ate at a German restaurant. Uh, I've not seen a French restaurant, but uh, there's plenty or if you're an American, you will easily be able to find food that you'll like. So uh, I don't think food okay. is a problem here. Okay. And uh, I think you had some uh, final thoughts. Um, I think we covered, well, let's talk about one more thing. What about, you said you live in a neighborhood that doesn't have any other foreigners or expats. Sure. How about safety? How do you feel about safety? Well, it depends on where you're living. Uh, in, in the area where I live, it's extremely safe. I feel as comfortable here as, as I do in the United States. If you go to other areas, obviously, like good and bad in, in any city, you just sure. don't go to the bad areas. So if you're in the right. good areas, safety here is fine. Yeah, no worries. I, I've never been robbed. I've never been approached. I've never felt uncomfortable. So mm -hmm. I'm very, very comfortable with the safety here. Okay, fantastic. All right. So I think you said uh, you, you had some um, final thoughts about uh, some things here, but um, you, you also had mentioned um, the visa situation. Can you explain the visa situation a, a little bit more? As a, as a visitor or as a resident? Uh, let's say you want to move there. What, what are your options? Uh, well, they have a variety of, of options. I'm a, I have a pensioner's visa. Okay. Uh, the application uh, was pretty easy. I, I would not try to do it by myself. I would hire somebody. Mm -hmm. You only need a few documents. It's a very simple process. You will Your first visa, the one that I currently have, is good for three years, and then you can reapply five years at a time after that. Uh, I don't ever have to get citizenship if I don't want to. You okay. will be required to get uh, what's called a cedula, which is the national ID card, which is like a driver's license in the U.S., Mm -hmm. And you will have to get that. Uh, that's about it. Uh, other than that, uh, it's 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 a pretty easy process. So I think it's simple to have residency here. What are the requirements for that retirement or that pension uh, well, visa? Yeah, you have to have a, a, a an income. Uh, it's how do they rate it? It's about eight hundred dollars, I think. It, oh, it fluctuates okay. depending on what your average uh, Colombian makes. I think it's got to be two or three times more. I don't remember exactly. But it's less than a thousand dollars to qualify okay. for pensioner's visa. So if it's twice as much as what a Colombian makes, what what does a typical Colombian make in a month? Uh, your average Colombian will make somewhere between eh, four hundred, maybe five hundred, possibly. Okay. So if you compare that, for example, if you come down here and you have say fifteen hundred for a pension, mm -hmm. you're going to be about in the top ten percent of mm -hmm. the residents here. So so uh, kind of compare that with the Philippines. What, what's the average Filipino make, would you say? Oh, I would say around 200 to $300 average. Um, but then you get some higher end. But uh, of course, there's yeah. not really, 
not really much of a middle class here. Like there, I think there's there is a middle class in Colombia, but a little here, more here. Yeah. Uh, your your average Colombian with uh, with that kind of money, if you compare it to the U.S., it, it's it's pretty low. So sure. there's still that third world kind of mentality when it comes to how much you make, that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. the overall feel, uh, if you live here, uh, it just feels very comfortable. It, I feel okay. as if I'm in the U.S. So, now, Do you have to be careful in Colombia? Because in the Philippines, you can, there's, a, there's a lot of sharks out there in the water. You know, you can get sure. scammed and, and sure. vice versa, to be fair. There's a lot of uh, foreigners not treating mm -hmm. Filipinos good as well. So, but uh, there are some... Uh, as far as like uh, robberies or um, women? well, like the women, like maybe scammers or just after your oh. money and things like that. Well, uh, common sense, obviously. If I'm a 59 year old man and I'm going to date a woman who is 22, mm -hmm. come on, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, it's 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 all about money. So yeah, you're going to get scammed by the yeah. younger women. Do I feel a woman age appropriate that's seriously interested in me? No, I don't mm -hmm. feel that way. But you need to do your due diligence. Don't date her for a week and then move in with her and then want to marry her a week later. Learn, take a year or so and get to know her and you know, kind of kind of vet her mm -hmm. and make sure that she's she's doing the kind of things you want. Uh, sure. so overall, no. Age appropriate, no, I don't I don't feel like there are. Okay. Um, last question. Um, it, in the Philippines, there's a lot of single moms. So if you come out here and you want to date a woman or find a, a girl for marriage, there's a lot of single moms once you get over 25. Um, how about in Colombia? A lot of single moms. That's just something that you, if you want to date a girl who's in her 30s, that you you should expect to probably date a single mom. It's an epidemic over here. They're young. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I have met women who had children at 13, wow. 13, 14, very common. I met a woman who was 20, who had three kids. Mm. It is very, very common, particularly with the younger mothers, the older women. I know a woman who's 37. She has two kids, but they're teenagers. Mm. So uh, it's unusual to find a woman here who's single and has no kids. And she's say 25 or older. Generally speaking, rule of thumb, she's probably going to have kids. Okay. I heard that there's a lot of Venezuelans coming over. Is, is that true? Very true. All over South America. Uh, they're poor. Uh, you'll see uh, if someone's begging in the street, probably a Venezuelan. Uh, uh, now, okay, I would say if I had to pick, Mm -hmm. I think the Venezuelan women are more beautiful than the Colombian women. Wow. They're gorgeous. Yes. And yes. Uh, now let me define mm -hmm. beauty. Let me define beauty. On a scale of 10 to 1, if 10 is mm -hmm. beautiful, you know, gorgeous and nothing, I'm talking about 7 to 10s, not the 1 to 6s. The 1 to 6s, they're about the same anywhere in the world, but the sure. 7 to 10s, there's just beauty in here. Mm. It, it, you'll turn your head. It's it, it is it's it's almost a um, an entertainment in itself to, to see the women here. They're they're very beautiful. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we've been going for a while. Uh, any final thoughts that somebody yeah. should know if they're if they're coming out to uh, Colombia? Colombia. Uh, I uh, Spanish is going to be very important unless you want to live in say Poblado or stay there. You'll have a lot of expats there. You can get by, but you're going to need to know Spanish, not just a little, if you want to enjoy the experience. Sure. Uh, just stay in the, the, the safer areas. And if you know some people, they'll show you around. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a very nice area to live. I, I, uh, I don't regret moving here at all. So I think anyone who likes the mountains and mm -hmm. uh, the vibe of the city is wonderful. I, I think it would be worth a trip. Uh, but again, it depends like Philippines. If you go to the Philippines, sure. you, you know, certain people love it. Some people don't. It, it, it's it's uh, one of those things. So it, it's the same here. If you like Latin culture, uh, Medellin in particular, uh, wonderful place to come and visit. Sounds fantastic. Well, Steve, thank you so much for being well, on my channel. And well, uh, 
I appreciate that. Guys, don't forget, if you like this video, click share, click the thumbs up, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification. That way you're updated every time I come out with a new video. Um, Steve, maybe you'll be on the uh, show again. We can follow up with you and uh, see how things are going. That would be fine. That would be fine. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Take right, care, have Steve. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.